G'day and welcome back to another episode of Agency Highway. Today I'm speaking with Brennan Dunn, who most of you probably already know of uh, Double Your Freelancing fame and now his new software product, Right Message. Uh, but before I butcher it, Brennan, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us what you do. Awesome. So uh, first off, thanks for having me. Um, I've done, well, what I do now is I run two companies, uh, one of which is Double Your Freelancing which is really a content and training website for all things consulting. Freelancing is in the name, but if you look at the content, it's very focused on you know, sales and marketing for consultants, uh, pricing theory, um, everything from building your own products to escaping consulting, which I know a lot of agencies want to do. Um, so that's my main gig. That's the thing that kind of put me on the map, I think. And then um, the other thing that I do is I'm the co-founder and CEO of Right Message, which is a uh, website personalization software for uh, that basically lets you change what your site says and how it says it, depending on who somebody is, what data you have about them, and so on. Um, and appropriate for this audience, in a, in a past life, I owned a, uh, an agency here in Norfolk, Virginia, um, did the kind of the typical was freelancing, scaled it up. Got it to 11 employees and got sick of client work. So, uh, <laughs> I've never heard that story uh, before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so I did the kind of the typical agency thing of building a project management tool. Um, <laughs> it, it, uh, <laughs> it's called PlanScope. It's still around. I, um, I built that to get out of consulting. Did fairly well, but W Freelancing actually came from the content marketing arm of that company. So, Wanted to find people, agencies weren't searching for anything as we, you and I just talked about, uh, focus on freelancers because they were searching for how do I get clients, how do I price myself, how do I write proposals. Got a lot of freelancers using that, but the content side of it became a lot more popular than the software side of it. So I actually sold PlanScope back in 2016, went all in on WR Freelancing, and then about a year ago, exactly as of next month, uh, started Right Message. Yeah. This is uh, this is totally off topic, but um, how stressful was the sale of the business for you? Um, the only so I had a broker, which made it much easier, but they take a chunk of it. Oh yeah, we um, did the same thing. <laughs> so um, I'm sure we could talk for hours on that. Yeah, but the um, long and short of it was, I made the mistake of mingling everything under a single umbrella company that. I was doing an asset sale. It wasn't selling the company, it was selling an asset. And I had to go in and when they do their due diligence and get all their like credit card statements and stuff, I had to go in and basically block out everything that wasn't related to selling to PlanScope. <laughs> the issue was I'd have like a web hosting bill and that would include like this and PlanScope site under one amount every month. So got yeah. really, so now with the new thing, it's like brand new company, brand new credit cards, like, completely separate um because it was a total pain well you think we would have learned but content snare we've done we've done the exact same thing with content snare and it's an asset uh it's all under the same brand but we do strip out all our sales and most of our hosting is with different companies from the rest okay. of our business anyway so yeah i know that pain um <laughs> yeah, you're like preaching to the choir it's kind of one of those things where like when you're starting a new thing and you don't know if it's gonna work you're not gonna go out and be like do everything right, right? I mean, yeah, eventually, and especially when there's extra costs, right? If you've got yeah, a, exactly. another accounting bill, you know, yeah. you got to. Right. Well, I don't want to pay an accountant for two tax returns. When exactly. I can just one. Especially so, if you don't know. then, you know, then you get to the point of the buyer wants a clean break. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A little hard. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So much fun. All right. We, yeah, we just about could have another <laughs> interview on that as well. <laughs> Um, okay. So before, before we get into this uh, new blueprint, what's the best thing that's happened to you this year? Oh, you weren't going to ask me that. Okay. Oh, uh, I didn't say, sorry. Well, I can cut. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Um, I think the, the best thing that's happened to me is probably that I, um, well, first off, I, business wise, we launched right message. And even though I told myself, uh, after I sold plans, I was never going to run another software company. Um, we really? built it. We yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, I really like the lifestyleness of W freelancing. Yeah, okay, like, cool. Now, I've got it, we've got eight employees, and it's a day job. And before that, 
I was just really doing Dolby freelancing and it just worked and people bought and the support was literally like, Oh, I forgot my login info and I don't know how to use for password. Can you help? Um, Damn. but now software means actual support, actual <laughs> stuff, but I love it. I mean, I, I, I just, I really, I'm an engineer by training. I really love getting back into this. Um, so yeah, we launched it Jan- January 23rd of this year, 2018. Nice. And uh, did better than we thought. Um, we're growing faster than I expected. And um, man, I'm just it's been a blast. Well, congrats, yeah. Because like uh, I've been watching that a little bit. I don't know how I found out about it. Probably through Laura, actually. I don't know, but oh, cool. yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've sort of watched the the growth of that. Um, and I think one of the biggest things with right message because there's other personalization stuff out there and other ways to do it. But I think the difference you guys have is such tight integration with CRMs, which yeah. makes it like another level right if you can personalize based on data that's in a crm not just like the data you know about the visitor like without that integration but yeah um anyway i think we'll talk about that a bit later on um so let's let's dig into the blueprint so this is like a new is this a new course brand new well no it's it, it originally was a book that i published about four years ago so the original product was called sell yourself online blueprint and the idea was it was going it was a well not not the idea it was a book on what do you do and what do you put on your website uh as consult so you know my my argument was you see a lot of these especially on the freelancer side of things where they have like hey i'm james i live in you know (laughs) australia i like surfing or something like that and that and it's maybe like a little like you know, some like images of clients you work with or something like that. And that's pretty much it, right? It's very much focused on them. So my argument was if you want to really have your website be effective, it needs to focus on what your clients need from you Mm -hmm. um, instead of just being kind of like a extended CV type thing. Right. So um, that was, that was in a nutshell, but this was very early in my career. I mean, this started, um, not, not in my career, but, but in my like experience with building audiences and automation and everything like that. So that was released. It did well. And then I worked with a lot of, um, uh, a lot of more agencies in a course I used to have called the consultancy masterclass. And that was focused on doing a lot of what I did when running an agency, namely education based marketing as a way of reliably and predictably getting clients. So, I think if you're an agency owner, you can probably sympathize with this, especially if you have fixed overhead, but um, it kind of sucks when you don't have recurring revenue coming in and you're like, Oh, where am I going to get October's money from? Right. Yeah. So like we have enough project work for now, but I don't know when the next clients can come. And the, the thing is most of us, I think operate more reactively where we wait for hope. Hopefully maybe somebody will refer us or hopefully somebody will fill out our contact form (laughs) or hopefully, um, you know, some external event will occur that will get us that new project that we need to stay afloat. And it's it's not nice to have that reliance, you know, like, cause I've been in that position for years as well. I know exactly what you're talking about. And like, you know, it always, sometimes most of the time seems to materialize, you know, like that referral will come in and you're like, yes, but, but sometimes you cut it pretty fine and it's not a nice feeling. Well, there's a lot of survivorship bias I found out in that, you know, I have probably lucked out in the right ways, but there's a lot of people who don't get that right referral and True. end up through a foul. And um, yeah, so, you know, my, my interest was I, I did very well, I think, with the agency building up this educational marketing pipeline where we would do things like, you know, we were a web design and development agency, right? So we did, we built products and websites and so on for people. And what we realized was if we were just kind of promoting ourselves as an app development company, let's say, very limited pool of people who that would appeal to. It's not, not, not everyone who could benefit from us knew that they needed this, right? Mm-hmm. So we started doing things where we, you know, we would host out of our office seminars where we would do something like, should you build something or should you buy something? Should you buy software or build software, right? Or things like um, we did mobile work, so iPhone versus Android development, or what happens when you outgrow Microsoft Excel and you have this, all these internal workflows dependent on 
Excel or Access or something like that. <laughs> and you're kind of getting to the upper limits of usefulness, right? So we did a lot of these seminars where we really <clears throat> open up to the business community, invite them to our office, invite, have them share it with their peers and so on. And we built up an audience of about 3,000 people locally to us. And we would just wow. basically keep doing these events. We would do things like anytime we kicked off a client project, we'd go to a bar, have first drink on us, invite that whole list to this location and say, we're buying drinks. We're about to launch this project. Here's the background of this project. Here's why we think it's awesome. And if possible, if it was a local client or we could fly them in, we would have the client there. So it was kind of like living testimonial with booze, right? So it worked out really well. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> We did like little mock, I don't know what you guys call it there. And we have Shark Tank or Dragon's Den in the UK. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Australia. But the equivalent of that, we would have like the local, uh, and we're not a big area, but we have, there is like an angel group, angel um, investor group. So we would do like that kind of competitions and stuff. Needless to say, we basically put ourselves front and center in the business community. We have really helped define it for our, for our area. And why, why this helped was we were able to get people who didn't really know that they had a, um, you know, they, they didn't come to us because they like had a project that they needed development help on. They didn't even know they needed that. We had a lot of people who just weren't qualified, like real estate and, you know, agents and yeah. banker lawyers. But guess what? Bankers and lawyers know business people, right? Oh, so yeah. our referral game was very strong because if you think about it, most, most of us who get referral work, it comes from people who have benefited from us in some way, namely clients. Mm -hmm. So we deliver a great client project. They are then likely to refer us. Our thinking here was we've got 3000 referral channels who are getting value from us in, in the sense of like, you know, these launch parties for client projects, these seminars we're hosting, these little shark techie type things and all these different things we did in the community. And, we ended up having more referrals than we could handle because we had such a big audience of people who were consistently getting value from us. We were staying, we were top of mind because they kept coming to our stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that was our whole strategy was just, you know, to build up such a network of people who have received value and in some way were indebted to us who would then in turn refer people to us. So we got, we got a lot of, you know, big enterprise fortune 500s. Oh, wow. um, back when Mitt Romney was running for president, he hired us. We didn't have any direct connection to any of these people, but the people in our network, the people that yeah, they did. we invited to our events knew these people. So yeah. I feel like buying beer for people is a, is a great um, way to get referrals too. <laughs> yeah. Get your client, bring your client to a bar, invite your local list and say, Hey, first drinks on me. It's going to be the best like money you've ever spent at a bar. Um, it, it oh, worked. Oh, well. and, and you know what? Like, I had no idea this is where this chat was going to go. Even when we were talking offline before this and we we're talking about like sort of inbound and content marketing, this is not what I expected at all. So this is freaking mind blowing, especially because like we've, we've recently kind of stopped agency work. But um, a good friend of mine, uh, Matthew Kimberly, who's an epic sales dude, and he's going to come on this podcast at some time as well. Um, he, this was his recommendation for me too, was to start buying people drinks, you know, putting a, a bit of money on a bar tab and getting people together every month or whatever, you know, cause, cause our target audience was uh, web designers because we were the back ends developers, right? We were the same. We were a software development company as well. And mm -hmm. all our best referrals for that came from other web agencies that couldn't handle the work. Yeah. Or yeah, IT yeah. companies. And that was going to be the plan is just like a, a get together every month for uh, web designers to just, you know, yeah. shit, shit or whatever um, with, with, you know, 500 bucks on the, on the bar tab or whatever. And yeah. so it's, it's very cool to hear how well that worked for you. <laughs> well, it's kind of like, I mean, it's still, it's still as luck driven as random referrals, but you're kind of increasing the surface area of luck, right? Oh like yeah. You're saying, you know, you know, as an app development company, we maybe had, seven or eight, maybe 10 clients a year. I mean, these are big greenfield projects. Right. Um, so we're not like scaling up our client base significantly and opening up more referral potential. However, if the equation is literally give some, somebody something of value, keep them top, keep yourself top of mind and they will in turn refer others to you when the opportunity arises. Well, you get 3000 people. We're not going to get 3000 clients ever. <laughs> like that's yeah. that would be insane for us. But um, this allowed us to get the same overall effect without needing to have 3000 actual clients. I would love 3000 clients. Don't get me wrong, but you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So that was our strategy there. But then the problem there is that that works well for local stuff, right? But if you're in the middle of nowhere or you have more, your, your, your aspirations are more of like a global, not global, maybe regional, national, global reach, um, it kind of falls apart, right? So, I mean, we, we were fortunate in the sense that we had an office can invite people to that office. Now, granted, mm-hmm. you could go to run a conference room, a co-working space, um, go to a coffee shop. I knew a guy who actually did uh, coffee with the CEO office hours. Every Thursday, you show up at this coffee shop every Thursday at this time. He will be there. You can talk to him about anything marketing or technology related. And he was an agency owner. And he just, you know, that, that worked for him or that I think that still works for him. But with the blueprint, I wanted to find a way to kind of merge together a lot of the best practices and, and things that work with building and scaling an audience online of, you know, where you do content marketing, podcasting, this, that, guest posting, uh, maybe even paid stuff, bring people into a funnel and the funnel ultimately pitches them on usually like courses or software or something like that, but make that work for consulting projects. So the thinking was like in my own case, you know, I target people who are not looking for, they're not looking for courses, they're looking for help. They're looking for things that appeal to them right where they are right now. So the thinking was, well, what if you take that same model and take a lot of the education-based marketing stuff we've done for the agency, merge that together with things that have more scale, are more uh, not as in-person beer. I mean, while I like the idea of going to bars and buying people drinks, something that's a little more systematic. Um, yeah. And so that, that's what it is in a nutshell, is basically how can you leverage a lot of the same principles that relate to you know, building a, like, so for instance, with my agency, we would go, when we had no audience, we would go to other people's in-person networking events and basically steal people from there, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, of course. You know, you go, to, you go to an event, you meet 10 people. You, um, one of our tricks we did was we didn't really have an email list or anything like that. But we said, hey, we're, um, we're putting together this little local community of people who are really interested in the intersection between um, business and technology. I'd love it if you were, uh, I'd love to like send you more about what we're doing. Do you mind if I do that? So instead of the usual like ritualistic business card exchange that would happen at a conference or a networking event, we would say that and they'd be like, hey, I mean, your, your opt-in rate was like 99.9%, right? <laughs> and um, people would be like, yeah, I'd love to you know, send me more info about it or whatever. And we did that. And that's how we built our initial audience, right? Yeah. Where we'd go to um, uh, the Chamber of Commerce to this, education series right and um we went there and we just gave a presentation like we wanted to do it we did it internally but we did it to them and we said you know if you want to know we weren't trying to sell them at that point that's the big distinction i think is we weren't trying to be like hire us right now instead we said if you want to find out more than we could cover in the last hour and go more in depth you know go here and type in your email address now at that point we had nothing but we we're like, okay, 80 people just did this. We should go and figure out something to send these people every you know, few weeks or something like that, right? Yeah. So that was our strategy at first, was just to do this again and again, siphoning off the, the, the hard work that these other channels have put, or not channels, but these other groups have put together to, to develop an audience that is similar to who we want to work with or who we could benefit, and then steal from them. And then, so it's the same thing, like if you go on and, podcast where you do a guest post. I mean, it's Absolutely. The same. I was just thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing, just an in-person equivalent. So what can we learn about both to kind of, you know, find something to meet in the middle so you can still do something where you're not just like, I think for so many agencies, so many freelancers, the whole thing is like, you know, they try running ads and these ads point directly to their service page mm-hmm. and they're like, why doesn't this work? And they <laughs> give up ads don't work. Yeah. Or they do like, you know, they do podcasting or they, they do this and they don't know that there needs to be some sort of automated nurturing funnel. And they're not familiar unless they're marketers with the concept of, you know, people aren't just going to like click on your random Facebook ad and then buy a 20 K project from you. Like that doesn't, <laughs> that's how it works. Right. No. So, you know, what can we learn from both the, you know, high touch in person, education-based stuff that I had done. Um, what, what can I take from that and apply it to the 
high scale, lower touch, um, uh, kind of building an audience online kind of approach mm. with the outcome being booking people to apply to work with you after they've been sufficiently convinced that you know what you're doing, that you're able to help them and that the ROI of you working with them is going to outweigh the cost. Right. So that's, that's the whole thing kind of in a nutshell. Yeah. So that um, like nurturing sequence thing, I mean, that's what, that's the exact reason that we have a weekly newsletter, right? Because I had, you know, I didn't really have much to send people. We were kind of a new business um, at the time when I started that. And I didn't have like lots of things to constantly nurture people with. Um, so I basically just did a roundup of like helpful stuff with a little bit of, um, you know, commentary at the start, you know, talking about a random topic each week and that's been really well received. So I'm, um, keen to hear like what kind of stuff you would use to nurture, uh, those, that audience that you did get in. Yeah. So a few things, Tom, to go on to the point you just brought up about the newsletter, um, a big pushback, which you probably experienced yourself or people have said to you is, well, what do I write? Um, what do I, you know, what do I do if I, mm. what do I send people? Yeah. Um, what I found works well, and this is something I, I did for myself for a while, was, you know, we all keep our ear pretty close to the ground. If we're in technology, we know we read Hacker News, we know like what's going on, we know um, all these different things. And what I found works if you're not, if you don't have a habit or if you don't have created stuff this week or whatever of writing, let's say, I could just go and I could send, um, you know, this, this audience of people who are interested in like, you know, say I built up this kind of fledgling list, email them and say, hey, here's three different things I read this week with like your commentary under each link. It's so like, here's a thing on, I don't know, some new framework that's coming out or something. Yeah. Here's what I think would be helpful for you. Um, here's what I got out of this article, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Do that like two or three times. And then in the end say, um, you know, I'd love to know what you think about any of the things I sent above. If um, any of this content is gonna shift you know, something you're doing or help you reprioritize some initiative that you're planning or whatever else, drop me a reply and, and tell me what that is. And the, go the goal here would be to kind of automate sales conversations, right? So you do this, say you have a list of 100 people, you're sending this content out every week um, and just different, different things that they could be thinking about, different ideas that you come across and then get them to respond back to you. Not in like a schedule a sales consultation, but instead just hey, drop me a reply and let me know what you're planning on doing after reading these articles or something like that. And then that can kind of naturally turn into, let's jump on the call on a phone and call and, and you know, talk about more this more in depth, which can then turn into an actual project on the table, right? So that's one thing. That's kind of the, that's something I cover in terms of the kind of the long-term nurturing, right? So, you know, you want to have, Typically, the way I break things into is you have some sort of like onboarding-ish lead magnet thing that gets people in the door, um, educates them about a certain thing, and then ultimately pitches them on working with you. But then the majority of people who move through that are not going to act on that, right? right? So, you know, the majority won't, but then they get dumped into this kind of long-term nurturing newsletter where you can either have an evergreen system where you're just sending out like weekly content that's more or less on autopilot. Or you could instead have it be more or less live. So like here are three things I read this week. Mm. Uh, here's my brief commentary on each. Reply and tell me something. And as that list grows, as you do more, you know, the idea would be come up with a free offering, what I call a freebie offering, which is like an email course, right? So the quintessential example would be um, e-commerce companies, right? So let's say you're a designer, you want to focus on helping, you want to build a channel, a very positioned niche channel uh, that leads e-commerce companies to working with you. So you go and you put yourself in front of e-commerce companies. Maybe you're uh, do a guest post on Shopify blog. You do, you know, you go on different podcasts or something like that and you're not pitching yourself. Instead, what you're doing is you're giving a talk. Um, and I'm going to be a bad example of this because I don't have any of this for this podcast, but, um, Actually, I do a free pricing course.com. I'm sorry. Um, free pricing uh, course yeah, 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 yeah. That's my, uh, I don't have one yet for the blueprint, but when I go and talk about pricing, I send people there at the end. Okay. I'm like, if you want to go further into depth about what we just talked about. So the idea would be instead of pitching somebody on your, on your service or whatever else to, um, you want to, you want to sell people, uh, on a free thing that is going to cost their time mm. and a new relationship with you. Right. So their email address. 
Um, and the idea would be instead of going out there and hustling to like sell your service to a bunch of people who are listening to the podcast that you're on and had just heard about you for the first time five minutes ago, instead drop a ton of value and then say, if you want to go deeper into what we just covered, go to, um, this, and that could be like an opt-in URL that yeah. basically gets log an email course, right? So the idea would be you, you, you sell the email course, you sell the lead magnet, you sell that freebie offering first and foremost. And then the job of that is to qualify people and to educate them about two things. One of which that what the pro what, what a problem that they probably have is. So let's say you're targeting e-commerce companies it could be something about how, uh, different, you know, a few different ways that their current design might be holding them back. So it could be like an assessment you give them in one lesson and it can walk through, here are some different things that you could do. Here's the deal with exit pop-ups. Here's the deal with remarketing. Here's the deal with, um, kind of best practices that I've researched about the best way to make the checkout experience and different things like that. Right. Hmm. Any e-commerce company, regardless of if they think their design is great or not, is going to be interested in because they all want to sell more. You know, every company wants to sell more or spend less money. Yep. So you get them on that, you teach them a lot. And in this teaching, you're, you're showcasing what you know. Um, you're kind of biasing them towards agreeing with you, right? So this is this is why you should do it this way. And then at the end of the day, after they've gone through the email course, it's basically, do you want to, um, you have two options. We've, we've identified that you're probably missing out on sales, probably missing out on a lot of conversions. Maybe even give them like a little PDF worksheet where they can fill in blanks and figure out exactly like, you know, what is their current conversion rate? What it, what could it be? How much do they make a month? You know, all these different things. People love worksheets like that. And then um, you're basically presenting them with two paths. Either they can go and take this and go through the kind of the crapshoot of trying to find somebody who can, you know, a designer who understands conversion rate optimization, understands e-commerce, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Or um, you as the creator of this course could help them specifically and help them chart out what needs to be done. So my, my, my thinking here is instead of selling them on a big project, one of the things we did best was to sell people on something small. So like we call it road mapping, but it could be like a paid discovery or some small engagement yeah. that, you know, isn't a jump headfirst into the waters and we've never worked together at all, but instead get them on something that's more or less an impulse buy for their business, get them in, make them now a client, deliver again, a ton of direct one-on-one -on -one value. And then from there, through the report that emerges from that session, upsell them to the full blown implementation project. So that's yeah, that's kind awesome. Of and, and like, I, I know a good um, thing I've seen a lot of people doing recently is like an audit. Um, and uh, a friend of mine, awesome. that, uh, um, Cliff uh, Clifford, uh, behind my web audit is a, is a tool probably worth checking out. That's a pretty well, cool. Clifford and Amelia. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a student of the road mapping thing that I just. Oh, did. no way. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, his his tool is I've seen a lot of people talking about that uh, in in yeah. like um I guess a way to generate well a few things leads as well as um doing audits for people as like a service up front um, yeah yeah which is which is exactly it because again it's it's one of these like little risks the only risk is really the money it doesn't require you to go out and find like well if I'm fully booked you can still do this now right mm -hmm. like it doesn't. It's not something that's going to require, you know, three months of clearing your schedule or whatever else. Yeah. Um, and it's like you said, it, it's what you're, what you're doing is you're saying, here's a bunch of information. It's probably going to be very overwhelming in some respects, <laughs> but I'm going to give you a prescription that then you can act on that given, you know, I'm going to audit what you've got. I'm going to look at your current site. You're going to give me, oh, we'll be under non-disclosure. So you can give me all your sales data, your conversion data. I'll get in your analytics and I will tell you exactly what you should be doing. And then obviously, the upsells, hopefully then you can, I can just do it all for you, right? Uh, but there are some people who do so well with these audits that they just, that's all they do now, right? Mm -hmm. Like they don't even need to do the actual full home project anymore. They just do this and they're like, here's a prescription, go find a designer and they can do it for you. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's, that, that's the thing that, you know, we've had a lot of success with. We've had a few hundred students who have gone through setting up funnels like this, where the idea is you have an entry level free thing that you can promote everywhere through guest posting, podcasting, content marketing, paid acquisition stuff, or whatever else. This then systematically puts people through a funnel that gets them to apply to work with you. And then 
the majority of the people won't, but enough will that it'll be worthwhile. The ones who won't, maybe they're not ready, they don't have the budget, whatever else. For them, you get them on, you know, say a weekly newsletter where you're doing exactly what we said, either it's the new content or just kind of a roundup of things you've come across and you're asking them to reply, you're asking them to engage in sales discussions. So the idea is every week you send out this email and maybe a handful of these people reply and then one thing leads to another and that's kind of the, um, more or less the, the funnel. And yeah. you know, this works well both for direct clients but also referral. Because if you're keeping yourself top of mind is the authority and e-commerce conversion design stuff that you know you have all these people but a lot of them are gonna be the type, you know, they know other people. And they're like, exactly. oh, you know, yeah. Brennan, yeah, you should talk to this guy. Um, and that that's what you want. So it's just a way to kind of, you know, ultimately a lot of it still is luck if they don't have the budget or whatever or you know, whatever, it's, it's not going to work, but it lets you expand that surface area in such a significant way that the usual way of just dealing with people who have actual projects on the table. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, a it's, it's a better approach to that, especially if you want to be more in command of who you work with and what kind of projects you bring on. Yeah. I think, I think that's a really good system. Um, especially like, <laughs> Mostly because uh, we do the exact same thing here. That's why I'm just pre- tooting my own horn here. But, um, <laughs> um, you know, and over time, we've kind of built up a, a series of freebies um, in various ones, various sort of forms just to see which works well. Um, but what we've started doing now is really cross promoting all of these things as well. Right. So like we've got a five day challenge and and that's like one of the main things you mentioned there. And I wanted to uh, also mention that Laura, um, the mutual friend of ours from client portal, uh, ha- I've heard her talk about our email course a lot. And that's um, uh, all pretty much all of her sales come directly from that. Exactly. Yeah. So I might even um, put that in the show notes. It's at um, client dash portal dot IO. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but I'll drop a link to the, to the course uh, in there. Um, so you can see, a, you can take a course and see a really good example of it at the same time, uh, as an agency, you're also going to benefit from her course. So go and take that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. And, and the, once you actually build up a few of these freebies, I find that is kind of a nurturing sequence in itself, you know? So we've got the yeah. five day challenge and that leads in like, if they click certain links in certain emails and they might get sent our agency toolkit. Uh, we've got like a calculator for how much people should charge for websites, like all these different things you can start feeding them into each other. And obviously the goal, um, well, not the goal, but a lot of them try to feed into that weekly newsletter because that way they'll be, will be top of mind until they unsubscribe. Right. And, and to me, that newsletter is just low hanging fruit. I feel like especially if you don't give yourself enough credit like a lot of people don't they don't feel like uh, uh in fact i saw this in a facebook group just yesterday there was a big discussion about imposter syndrome uh, you know and everyone has it like i met a guy who's basically a celebrity um and you know he sold an enormous business he gets interviewed on news all the time like he's huge and he was like I wake up with imposter syndrome every single day and i have to remind myself that i do all this stuff so you know, and, and I think I'm a little bit the same. And the reason I'm going into this is because to me, like you don't, you can get straight past all of that if you're doing a newsletter, because all you're doing is sharing good content from other people uh, that is relevant to your audience with a little bit of commentary, uh, you know, and as I get further into this, I start, I'm starting to write more and more stuff because I feel better about it. Right. But it's just so easy every week. I go in, I filter the, all the content, like using an RSS reader, I've, like Feedly I use. And then I just dump the most relevant stuff into an email and send it out. Like it's really easy. Yeah. Um, you- anyone, who, anyone who's pretty much like a self-appointed authority has been self-appointed, right? Like so, yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, like anyone who um, is like you look at as an authority in marketing, let's say, or copywriting, they're there because they – did what, a, you know, the, the person I think who gives a really good example of this is whenever Nathan Berry talks about Chris Coyer and, you know, him and Chris were both kind of learning CSS simultaneously back however many years ago, but Chris blogged about it. Chris blogged about, oh, you know, I tried this and this thing was weird with like element floats and I did this and now this worked and so on. 
And now when people think like, who is the person who knows everything about CSS? It's Chris, because he was the one sharing the open, what he was learning, his screw ups, his takeaways. And we all do this like on client projects. I know for a fact, I'm like trying to figure out this weird like billing thing where they, you know, they need to, we have this requirement for this project where this is how we need to handle billing. And, you know, I'll do a bunch of research and I'll figure it out, I'll implement it. And then I'll just move on to the next thing. Whereas I think the part were the ones who are like, I'm going to write that down and share it. And it's going to show like, who knows when somebody is going to search for that, like one obscure need, find my stuff. And then now there's, you know, either a referral relationship or they come on board as a client or something like that. Right. So yeah. that's the stuff that I think separates. And I know for a lot of us, it's, it's hard to like go out in public like that. I mean, we can do it with our clients all we want and, we're fine like conversing with our clients and telling them authoritatively, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. But then once you put it on the webpage, it gets different for some reason, right? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was doing that when we first launched Content Snare. Actually, I was talking about, I did like weekly videos of like all the marketing stuff and, and what we were doing that was working and not working. And then at some point, you know, I was just like, oh, I, I need to focus and I stopped doing it. I'm kind of sad I did now, but um, I've got a whole lot of notes of all the stuff that we did in the beginning to try and go back maybe one day. I probably won't. Um, but <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and no, I think that's a really good point in that, like, especially when you, it's, that's kind of an easy way to create content if you're already doing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my big thing is like, look, if you're, if clients are coming up to you and asking, and this is what I covered and the blueprint is like, if clients, you know, clients have objections, they have doubts, they have all this stuff that is naturally occurring in the sales process. Right. Like I remember once um, I had a client who wanted us to build a marketplace, right. Just brand new, like connecting uh, like bars with musicians. So like if you're, oh, yeah. you want to have like a guy playing the guitar, like you could do it through this. And my experience in having either kept my ear to the ground or, or having worked with a lot of startup tech clients was it's really hard to do that. It's really hard to get, that like launch a new business were both kind of aligned perfectly, right? If you remember back in the early Airbnb days, they just went and they found Craigslist listings and basically seeded their directory with that stuff, right? Um, so, you know, that's hard, but they didn't, they, they saw Airbnb, they saw all these other kind of online marketplaces and they're like, oh, I've got this great idea. So that could have been, that should have in retrospect been some content I produced or something about like why, you know, and that, that, that in turn goes to show that I'm not just a developer, but I know I can think enough about business and mm. kind of, you know, my, my job is to protect the client sometimes from themselves and saying like, <laughs> do you really want to go down this path? Probably not. And here's why. Right. So that's the sort of stuff that I think um, we, we do it a lot in private. We do it a lot in conversation, but we don't really use it as evergreen acquisition channels that could come. Like, I, I think it's great once you've, you know, I've been writing uh, for a while now. And it's when I get an email and somebody's like, hey, do you have any advice about this? Nine out of 10 times my response is a link to an article or two. <laughs> That's it's awesome. so much easier, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, so I think. You know, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to argue that everyone should necessarily have this giant blog for their consulting business, but we need to start thinking in terms of channels. We need to start thinking in terms of what are we leading these people to? Is it directly, you know, right out the gate you just met me from a Google search? Uh, oh, go ahead and like fill out this like project request form. That's right? like five pages long. <laughs> yeah. Or is you know how are you handling the people who are still kind of exploring your options and don't really know what they need yet? Mm. And you can give them like an assessment, you can give them an email course, you can give them, you know, or it could just be as simple as, hey, if you want, you know, advice from me every week about the intersection of technology and marketing, um, drop me your email address type thing. I mean, that's a good, I don't like that because it doesn't really give people anything that's enticing. Whereas if you say, give me your email now and I'll give you this right away, that's a bit more compelling. Mm. But um, yeah, I mean, that, that's the kind of thing we're talking about is, being able to go to a conference and, um, you know, opting people in on the spot to an email course you put together or going to That's an event, awesome. same thing, or giving a talk on a stage at a local meetup group 
or even a full blown conference. And I mean, this is what I do where I try to go, on, I go to a conference and give a talk on a stage. It's not like, Oh, go check out my website or something like that. It's, if you want to go deeper into what we just talked about, um, you know, go here. And I've even done like lead digits has this thing from late pages where Texas number and you know, it'll basically hmm. opt you in. Um, and that's the sort of stuff that, that, you know, my focus. So I mentioned freepricingcourse.com, which is the thing that leads people to double your freelancing rate, which is my biggest, it's had 8,000 customers or so for the last year, wow. years. Um, I don't, when I go and go on a podcast, to talk pricing, or if I go on a stage to talk, you know, consulting or whatever else, I don't, I'm not like go buy my course. I'm, I, instead I'm like, go, if you want to go deeper, I have a nine lesson in depth course, mm. 25,000 people have gone through it, go here. And that's the thing that works consistently really well. Cause I'm able to kind of date the person in a way. Right. Yeah. Before saying, Hey, let's yeah, the classic analogy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> trying, trying to get married on the first date. <laughs> right. And I mean, the traditional kind of application of that has been for selling courses or selling software or something like that. Mm. But um, data has shown that human psychology is universal, right? And the same strategies and, and tactics can work for consulting. So. Totally. There was, there was one thing I was just thinking there, like with, uh, with the courses, um, because I think a, a, a common objection might be the amount of time it takes to create a course. Um, just what we, we created our course. Uh, well, I created our course in like two days, not even that, you know, it was, it was not even a full day's worth of work. Um, and you know, I was worried that it, you know, wouldn't be very good. No one would get value out of it. Classic sort of perfectionist stuff. But um, I've put a form at the end that says, you know, what did you think of this and whatever? I want you to be really honest. And we get so much good feedback through that. And yeah. just from something that took under a day to make. And it's not like professionally produced. It's like five different pages on my website um, right. with a couple of like links to download stuff at the end because I had like a Gravity Forms file on one of them so they can download that to suck it into Gravity Forms. And other than that, it's, yeah, like I literally made it in a basically a day and and that is still one of our good lead magnets you know so um if you're out there if you're listening and thinking you don't have time just get something up it doesn't have to be perfect and you can always work on it over time like that's that's pretty much how i'm approaching everything now i'm just like getting something up seeing if it works and then making a to-do list to come back later and, and improve it and that's the right attitude to take because I know, I mean, I, I think that's partly, you mentioned imposter syndrome, it relates to that in that, mm. you know, we need it to be perfect. We need it to be correct, fully correct to, you know, assuming that it needs to be so polished and so perfect in order to be valuable. That's not the case. Right? No. Like, I mean, I do the, don't do what I do here, but if I'm doing a new email course, I'll just write lesson one. And then I'm like, oh, I have a date until lesson two comes out. So when that first person subscribes, then I'll get my, you know, ask my idea and write the next thing. <laughs> and then like, I've had it, unfortunately, I hate saying this, but we're like, I have like lesson three with like the content is ASDF and I forget to get it done. And then, oh, like, no. <laughs> the first guy will get an ASDF email for me. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, wow. This has been awesome, man. There's been so much helpful stuff in here. I think, I think we can probably wrap it up there. Uh, unless there's anything cool. you want to add on. on what no, we're not at all. Yeah, this has been great. Awesome. So I'm going to, going to ask you my classic last question. What's your favorite piece of technology right now? Can I cheat and say my own? <laughs> <laughs> right message. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, you can. Yeah, so no, I mean, I, um, yeah, so I, I really do genuinely mean this because I think it's it's pretty cool the stuff we're doing with it. But uh, yeah, rate messages, website personalization, and software. But I, I okay in terms of coolest, let me let me be serious. In, in terms of most effective, which I really too cool. Um, I've been building this app right message for the last year, and that's meant that double your freelancing, which is my main business, the one we've been talking about, has more or less been. Uh, with an absentee landlord for the last significantly last few months uh, up to a year. And Drip, which is the tool that powers all the marketing automation on the back end, mm -hmm. um, has made it so 
the automation capabilities and even things like their API and their integrations have made it so possible for me to make it so, you know, a thousand people a day hit my site from Google, you know, 50, 60 of them will turn into leads and consistently a percentage of them will buy. And then people buy and then they're upsold over time and cross sold over time. And there's been a very minimal impact in overall cash flow, even though I'm not there on that hamster wheel grinding out weekly material. I've got a 52 week newsletter that new people who opt in are more or less getting a weekly newsletter that is subtracting out any content they've already read on my site. So if they go to my site and they read five articles, those five articles will never be in most of them. It'll only be stuff they haven't looked at yet. And the ability to do that has made it so I'm able to pay myself pretty much a meager salary while we're still kind of trying to get to profitability with the right message with a non-existent impact in really lifestyle. So hats off to Drip, I think, for, for making that mm-hmm. possible um, in terms of the framework they've set up and everything else. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, there you go. So drip and right message, we'll say, as the <laughs> two <laughs> best pieces of technology. Um, all right, cool. Um, where should people go to find out more about you? We've, we've mentioned um, freepricingcourse.com. There's obviously wfreelancing.com. Uh, and in this case, wfreelancing.com slash blueprint. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, the, the last one, uh, if you geek out on website personalization, rightmessage.com. Just want to say hi, uh, Brennan Dunn on Twitter, B-R-E-N-N-A-N-D-U-N-N. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks, James.